Let's do this. Let's do this. Hey, this is PH. Welcome to Can I Screen Right? The, the time where I just write stuff live and film it and broadcast it because I should. Anyways, this is PH. I am your host of this magnificent opportunity. Not! Um, but seriously, um, yeah, stick around, learn some things. I'm gonna be today writing for the 48 hour. Actually, do it this way. For the 48 hour throwdown by Redder Duet. Right now, there is T minus about 10 hours left. Um, and here are the rules. So check it out. 48 hour throw, the 48 hour screenplay throwdown by Redder Duet. And if you're ready to rumble, it's the time. But uh, uh, I'm just gonna cut. Maybe no, no. Let's, let's just do this live. All right. So, get ready to rumble. It's time to throw down your screen ready skills and see if you got what it takes to beat the last writer standing. Enter the 48-hour screenplay throne and flex your writing skills and pit your quit script up against other writers in the WD community. E -e 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 -e. By finals, we'll have the script submissions read and judged by a professional screenwriter Daniel Petrie Jr. Beverly Hill Krupp and Tudor and Hutch. Feel free to submit. Effortless and, and fantastic opportunity to win prizes that help support your writing journey. Some motions are open now. Start writing submit here. So it can either be in PDF. It's due uh, tonight. Like I said, at uh, midnight or, or a minute before midnight. And the finals will be announced uh, in about two weeks, three weeks. Yeah, something like that. I think it's two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, two weeks. Which is pretty impressive. Uh, the throw throwdown theme is tough love. No matter what genre you choose to write in, the tone your story takes, your script mission must embody the throwdown theme. Submission rules. You must embody the throwdown theme tough love must only have one scene heading one location maximum of four pages in length not included in the title page maximum of three characters five finals will win access to indie film muscle academy courses yeah um I honestly don't even know if I'm going to be uh, qualifying. I really just want the first place winner stuff. So. I mean, I just want the script coverage for for, for my project, truthfully. So. <laughs> uh, coverage is a biatch. Unless you pay people, truthfully. Like. There's a difference from people saying what you think, you what they think you want to hear, comparatively to uh, actually getting some proper coverage, and that takes a good relationship on top of it. Uh, my script, the one percent, I literally pitched it to my editor before sending it to him, and he told me it's like I'm gonna fucking hate it, and I was like I just no no I just don't no I don't want to read it whatever, and it sent it to him, and it was like the script that he didn't like. Which happens to be one of my most recognized screenplays that he takes credit for as being a finalist for the Elston Revolution Film Festival. If you catch my drift. So, you know what they say. Uh, if you can read between the lines, 
Who gives a fuck about their attitude? So seriously, though, he saved me some notes, and the notes were on point with that bias. And uh, I ended up sending it to an editor. And <laughs> yeah. It's my... Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. So, funny thing about that script, that's also a part of what my Beantown story series. Being Town is uh, was the start of my screenwriting wannabe life. My first screenplay I wrote was about Being Town. So, yeah, at the end of it, it's just like a a way to group all these projects together. So when I pitch it, I have three categories of projects. With his genre or basis is. And now, because I'm able to do this, if one hits, I have opp- opportunity to mitigate, um, which is just a, a, a better investment reality. So that's why I do it. And it's just like the rock happen is shown now. It's just the way the market is. If you really have uh, that impact, be prepared. The more content, the better. And a lot of this stuff, I'm a screenwriter, so uh, I just, I'm going to be hosting this stuff anyways, and we'll see if I package something in the books as it's becoming a an, a real marketplace for screenwriters, as it is like one of the, the most excited with learning crafted because we have so many people that watch TV and think they can screenwrite. <laughs> Um, screenwriting is really a technical craft. I just want to put it out there so you can learn it. Uh, once you get your nuances and your voice, then you're able to really go at your own pace of standard. And this is where once you get your voice down, I feel like it's a cool way to, to start putting down your value points. Um, the union really explains why those value points are there. And if you can justify that within your hourly or you work in to create a screenplay, you, on your own or by talking to somebody else, it really shows why you deserve uh, a livable wage uh, while doing this craft. Because again, it's a technical writing ability. It's writing instructions. And it's for movies. And this is, we could be recruited anywhere from the beginning to the middle of the process of, of development. And that's the interesting thing about screenwriting. Is that once that starts... You can backtrack and start writing stuff they're already filming, and then you're still a part of the, of the process until the, the the your your copy submitted to copyright by your producers. If you're not producing it yourself, and that's the difference too about knowing when a producer produces and a screenwriter stops screenwriting, or a director is directing. These are very cut and dry professions, but then responsibilities do muddle over a little bit, and a lot of people do cross the line uh, to take benefit for themselves. So, learn your positions. This is what the screenplay is going to play. Screenplay is going to be talking about um, at the table. What is that at the table? Bring the deal to the table. You know this ain't no fable. Call me Cable X-Men. That's right. Motherfucker. I'm handy able. <laughs> Anyways. Alright. Internal. I really want to maximize the expression of this scene. Right, so the idea I'm thinking is that because my it my imagination is so vivid, and like I could honestly, if I wanted to hallucinate in a fucking open space, I have a very vivid ima- imagination, and it it gets me into trouble. But I don't talk about it, about it very often because it is one of my superpowers. Um. So internal kitchen day (laughs) 
and I want to do something that I can potentially shoot too. So the great thing about this challenge is that it's four pages, two days, tough love. What is tough love? It's an obstacle that you have to get out. This story for me is reminding me why I have to be big brother and be the one to place the tough love in the industry. It sucks coming from a place of trauma and a lot of abuse. You find that until you go through the problems, most people are, are ignorant of them because they'll never have the chance to experience them. And that's just the reality. And if you're really lucky and you have a secure environment, yeah, yeah, you have to go looking for trouble truthfully. This is coming from somebody that did, I don't want to look for, tr for trouble. I like to stay in my own safe space. So people really do invite me or encourage me to do things that I will take, you know, things in, into consideration. But it's like, I'm not going to go manic and over the top for somebody that that is. Hmm. So you can watch tea. You know me, I drink my tea. Yeah. So. This is going to talk about. Verbal communication, right? Why people just waste the words they say and need to honor the power of energy. Um, And I use my own name. Um, and this, because I'm telling the truth, it's actually me recapping the story from my life. I have something called Providence, which means I have a way to retell this from my own perspective in any way that I choose to. Um, and that's just the reality of it. Being a creative and having this ability and knowing the legalities that it gives me, it really shows how some people are going to try to push you in a corner to take advantage of you. So, this story, I'm writing it, and I'm going to put this out there because it, it's just fucking real, you know? Um, the stove... The stove has possession of the flame, though. I like that. Uh, but. So, um, part of writing this stuff is you really want to maximize your ability and show what you're capable of. An onomatopoeia or in the tea kettle are capitalized because they're important things to take notice. Um, 
the click 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 automatopoeia is for audio the tea kettle is for your props this really does matter um not just because of really importance because it, it kind of brings some ambiance but also for directions to your crew remember you're writing for um You're ready for an audience. This is where spelling and grammar do matter. Um, and you got to be respectful to your readers. So make it exciting. Make it easy to read. But also respect the craft of for its technical exuberance. Word choice and being able to say a lot and a little with very visual words um, is just brilliant. Don't waste your space is what I like to say in screenwriting. One page should equal approximately one minute for your movie. So, So, like, the old male and tools, just, like, it's not, I, I really want to write, Siri, how do you spell the shuffle? on a carved out spot
The dishes ain't dirty. No. I'm not a dirty person. I just... When you take things out, I won't put them fully in. Sorry, I, I got, I get in the habit of checking my phone too much. All right, so I have three characters. I'm gonna use myself, and then I'm gonna use two more for this conversation because we want to bro it out. Like I was saying earlier. Um, His cup of tea. Because I'm the author of this. <laughs> so, I'm going to work this as a practice conversation.
So the two shrouded figures, one white and the other black. It's like the place over the names, place over the names. So it's like it is what it is. I could capitalize the shrouded figure figures, and that's what I'm trying. To, I'm debated. So where am I? All right, cool, cool. So I'm 30 minutes in the draft already. And as you can see, I have a great start. I'm about halfway through. One thing I really do like to do is read back my own work. Um, right now, I'm very happy. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfigure the white and black figures into being real characters. I'll expose one of them for what they are. Um, but as you can see, I already have a voiceover talking about my inner consciousness. So I'm now bringing in more character dynamic within the first half of the page about descriptions of what I'm going to be talking about as a story is about reflection. Uh, in tough love on yourself, too. Because at the end of the day, right, for me having to grow up, I have to accept um, just the truth. You know, why do people not like me? Why do people challenge me? Why am I testy right now as I'm in my, my, I'm in my healing journey, you know? Uh, I would just even just figure it out that I, I've had a huge change in my medical profile in the past month, month and a half, two months, um, with a huge pain relief from my knees and my hips and my ankles that literally blew my back at 16 years old. So someone can reflect on and understand you know, some real shit that I was dealing with. is like I have a herniated bulge herniated disc, pitch my sagging nerve, and now I have a butt. <laughs> Anyways, so like it really good does make a person think like you don't know where a person's coming from. So when you talk and you don't mean the words you say, people are going to interpret and mania could potentially be coming out of that. So, okay, Peach looks down as a watch to confirm the time. Two shrouded figures surround Peach, one white and the other black as memories flat, flood back to him. Wisp, W I S P, whispers. Whispers. Look up there. 
We'll just with the whispers.
All right. So the quotations or quotating something. Um, that's just for the memory and everything. Uh, there's a really cool dynamic just building in this, this idea. And that's why I, I really wanted to venture down it. We are 40 minutes in. I am about done with the first page. Uh, it looks like I have like maybe like two or three more lines that I could fill it up. But yeah, it, idea is like I'm basically done with the first page. Um, and I was thinking about going into a, a monologue, right? And in this situation, I'm actually going to do something. <laughs> I've literally emailed the Willis Brothers about this and nobody got back to me. And this is the problem with the industry, right? There's so much bullshit happening when you actually approach somebody with actually some legitimacy behind the bullshit. It's just like, nobody wants to humor you. And it's just like headache after headache. Um, I, I, I really can say people's entitlements just really just enough's enough. Um, where did that email go? Because it's on my personal and not my business. Because I took it from personal to business. I got nothing else to worry about. I think the worst part about it too is the anxiety that shit creates for me to deal with. Like, it creates anxiety for me to deal with that stuff. Yep. Anyways. And I'm just so exhausted from dealing with people. Because it's just like... Interesting. Alright. And the funny thing about it too. We're talking about providence too. And evidence. I'm pissed because this is just this creates just unwanted energy in relations in my life that was never warranted to, to for me to deal with. You know what I'm saying? And I've reached out. I'm like, yo, hey, what's up? Oh, cool. Okay, here it is. A 
Okay. So again, chirps are on Lanapia, but then it's a, a dual situation line. So 
you don't have to, but this is the last I'm going to be using them anyways, right? So might as well highlight both of them for props and for sound. The chirp's automatic, but the tea kettle doesn't need to be highlighted, which I'm going to go more on the technical side of things with it. The tea kettle boils. Chirp! So again, um, but because this is going to be kind of a stone with hot water, um, I do want to highlight it. I should probably take those labels off. All right. Um, I really wanted to get in the phone call already. Yeah, this is really a phone call.
right? The whole whole tea thing is about comfort. It's not about drinking the tea. It's about comfort. The truth is, I'm going to tell you now, the tea goes cold. Um. Do some. Woo. Hmm. Yeah, I gotta get back in here. So the reality has been out of the studio for a minute. Um, yeah, dealing with some personal stuff. So we're on page three now. Oh crap! We're an hour in. Look at that. Thirty minutes of page. Ooh, dee, ooh, dee, Build some tension, you know, we got some good characterization. (laughs) 
So we're going to put the spelling right on my name.
So, yeah, actually, that's Mr. Black.
Okay, let's read it. So we are an hour and 15 minutes into this. Um, I didn't talk much about it. I'll go, when I go through and read. Um, so the idea is that you have the angel and the devil, but they're not really ancient devils. But they're talking at you. You have your internal and you have your external. So you know, there's four ways of dialogue coming in. At the end, the VO gets shunned out because the internal voice becomes the external voice. That's why I did it. That's why there's some confliction back and forth. But let's check it out. All right. Internal kitchen day. A tea kettle's placed on the stove. Click, click, click. And a light and a flame lights under it. Lights, lights under it. Uh, Patrick P.H. Hamlet shuffles to the table. He places his laptop on a carved out space next to a littering of old mail, tools, and dishes needing to be put away. He grabs a mug from the cabinet and pairs his cup of tea. It's Earl Grey, one of his favorites, to help his nerves. Patrick P.H. muttering, I can't fucking believe this. Wow. Just, wow. P.H. boys over Fucking believe it. You told them so. Like it always happens. Way to be prophetic. Get ready, you asshole. For the... Get ready, asshole. For the ride of your life. Paige looks down his wife to confirm the team. Two shrouded figures around Paige. One right and the other black as the memories fold back into him with, with, with whispers. Ph. I mean, black. You know what I do? White. This is what works for me, Black. What do you need, White? That was really smart. Thank you. PH, funny how you told them so. Doesn't make it right. He sits down at the table. The Black figure looms in across the table. The White floats in the doorway. PH opens the laptop and reflects on the open email. We need to address this. I'm not one to be played. Before we first met, I looked up to you. Even though you were older until we we first officially met, I see a lot of myself in you, but you were lucky to see support. He looks up to the figure across the forum. You even offered to be my manager, White Echoes. Do the right thing. P.H., his head, the memories overwhelm, overwhelm his sense is, P.H., do the right thing, chirp, the tea kettle boils, P.H. gets up and shuts off the stove, he pours the hot water into his teacup, the white figure speaks into his ear, 50 cent for my thoughts. PH. I told you so. PH. VO. I told you so. PH. I know. I fucking know. This is just sad. It's just sad that it came down to this. Hopefully we can just build now. He sits down. Places his cup next to the computer and looks at the time. PHVO. It's go time. PH grabs his iPhone and dials the number. Black. Don't get your hopes up. PH. If everything goes as respectfully should, why not? Black. You know why. Black off screen. You have reached the office of... Please dial your, your extension now. P.H. dials extension 1-1 on his phone. Black, thank you for calls to the office of, please state your name. Patrick P. Shampton. Mr. Black picks up the phone. Patrick, how have you been? Honestly, doing much better, but a little points, a little disappointed that I have to approach you like this. Yeah, regarding that, I even heard from my social media person of some messages. He stares across the, the, the table. Yeah, sorry about that. I thought it was you, and I tried to bring it up casually there. Please, uh, give him my apology. Black. Off screen. 
It's not the first time. No worries. So what's up? Patrick PH. So I did a console for this producer and it was at my acting studio. We had a mutual son and I. Let me stop you there. The people you're talking about, they say they don't know you. They never met you. The light shot off. It's pitch black. The wafer glows in the dark. Actually, let's see that. So, we don't have any idea what you're talking about. And a spotlight hates PJ and the lights fills up the room. Now, um, how about you let me finish my story first before you jump to a ju to judgment? And so you know, he stares down the white figure. I'm not surprised at the re at that response, and even express that. What ifs? Ex express the quote unquote. What ifs? Knowing the person's background in media. I just want to work. That's gross. Time stands still as he expresses his story. Black. Black. Well, we didn't have an agreement with, with both parties over this. We choose to take our stance and you have to deal with it yourself. Are you serious? Yes, yeah, sorry. It's all it's all I can do. Anything else you want to talk about regarding this? No, but this isn't over. Thank you for listening to me. And you notice I'm still remembering what happened. He hangs the phone. White. I got you. Patrick PH, I warned you, someone needs to be checked, check you like your big brother. And I'm not afraid to talk down to you, Riddle. Just fucking wait. Enough is enough. But up, Bob. So we got four pages. Um, yeah. Pretty chill. Looks really clean. I'll send this somebody for some check. And, uh, yeah. It's a spec script, right? So, hmm. It's kind of fun. Very therapeutic and cathartic. This is what I tell people to do art. And this is what it got me into screenwriting. For me, it was like I needed to figure out something that I could just do something that was cathartic and get and dive into. So story development for me was that. And for me, a screenplay is like a puzzle. So I hope you guys like the screenplay. Um, let's bad up, up. Open that up. Bean Town at the table. Written by Patrick P. H. Hampton. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do that in because fuck it. Well, anyways, thank you for joining me. This is Patch PH Hampton, and you're watching Can I Screen Ride? No, you're wrong, motherfucker!